I'm a proud Microsoft certified trainer. I'm an Azure architect. I have been working with various organizations from consulting point of view on Azure, SharePoint, Microsoft 365, Power Platform and security areas as well. I have done number of webinars and seminars for Microsoft security. It has not been not been a, a smooth journey for me. The reason being multiple people have asked me saying, Om Prakash, I have never heard Microsoft being a security solution provider. I have heard about uh, network solutions. I, I have heard about. So many other big names that we have who are into hardware, who are into security solutions, Casper Sky or you Nutanix or you name number of other vendors, but never Microsoft. Guys, one thing that people have not noticed, somebody who is giving on premises solutions in terms of server, in terms of clients, client side solutions, client side operating system. Number of online solutions, right? They cannot survive. They cannot go ahead without giving a security solution or without using a security solution behind the scene. It may not have been organized in a way where they can launch courses around it, launch solutions around it. So there has been time which was required for Microsoft to come up with a very, very structured solution for it. If you all see in last. Three to four years. There has been five major certifications that Microsoft has come up with. If you look at these solutions. Starting off with SC 900, which is Microsoft Security Compliance and Identity Fundamentals. Which is the starting point for security solutions. And you have SC 100, which is Microsoft Cyber Security Architect. If you look at the resources over here. What Microsoft earlier began with was AZ 500, which is Azure Security Engineer. Moving with. MS 500, which is Microsoft 365 Security Administration. Which is more and more specific. To the underlying resources, underlying member that we have. Later came. The other remaining three members, which is SC 300. Which is primarily focusing on Microsoft Entra ID. Which is a new name for. Azure Active Directory. The next paper was SC 200. Security Operations Analyst. Primarily focusing on Microsoft Defender suite of security solutions. Focusing on Sentinel, focusing on Microsoft Defender for apps, Microsoft Defender for cloud, right? And lot of other entities that we have from server side. And client side security options using Microsoft Defender. The next resource that you'll see is. Microsoft Information Protection Administration. Focusing more in terms of Microsoft purview and what are the resources available here, which is part of SC 400. So if you want to specialize in terms of AZ 500, which is Azure Security Engineer, or if you want to specialize in terms of Microsoft 365 Security Administration, we can take up those papers. Or we can get into Microsoft Entra ID using SC 300, Defender, and SC 400. Archie has already mentioned a lot of details regarding our certification solution. Right now, my only focus over here is security solutions and what are the key members over here. Before I proceed ahead, we can't uh, unmute you all, but yes, we can converse in a sign language. Can I see a raise of hands? People who have cleared their SC 900, 900 certification. 
that's good to see vaibhav lensen okay so i can see three hands being raised people who have cleared their sc standard certification thank you guys put your hands down can i see raise of hands people who are new to security and i'm not talking about microsoft security new in terms of security domain wow that's great to see okay so there are few hands getting raised seven of them people who are new to security okay not a problem thank you very much guys put your hands down welcome to the world of security solutions everyone put your hands down so i can see there are quite a few who are new to security solutions not a problem can i see a raise of hands people who are already implementing security solutions within their organization may not be using microsoft products non microsoft products implementing security solutions may not be microsoft products that's fine firewall solutions cryptography solutions data encryption okay or you can see prithviraj has raised his hand thanks prithvi put your hand down so i i see a great team of people over here from different backgrounds some of them who are new to uh, security solutions some of them are already working on it some of them have even gone ahead and cleared their sc900 certification now before i go into details of this i don't think anybody is unaware of this environment so what i'm trying to showcase with this diagram is on premises environment where we have one of our major major security resource which is active directory right now this active directory would have users and groups it will be associated with number of servers and services which are locally available hosted on a virtualized environment or it could be running inside a physical machine not a problem so what organizations have done is they have registered or associated each of these servers devices client side applications everything into local active directory the reason why a lot of them want to understand or learn about security is because now organizations are feeling the pinch they cannot continue further with on premises and the restrictions that they have so what they would want to do is can i extend my on premises environment and without having too much of cost involved or if i can get to a pay as you go model so depending upon how much resources how much services i am using i pay only for that can i use that kind of model to extend my on premises environment build a hybrid resource over here and satisfy my organization requirements by using a cloud based resource this is where everybody is looking for as far as on premises is concerned i already have my users groups devices applications everything running smoothly no problem if i go to this new environment what would be the mechanism over here what would be the options for security how does it work will i be able to leverage on the existing resources or would i need would i have to discontinue with the existing resources right so lot of things are unknown over here for people 
even local solutions that we had, what happens to them? Would they be valid? Can I migrate those security solutions? What happens in this new environment? Lot of these things are unknown. So keeping this resource in mind, keeping this requirement in mind about making a new environment available and making sure we are able to successfully migrate or use both these resources. That's the key area of challenge for everybody. Can I see raise of hand? People who are already working in a hybrid environment. OK, I can see Linson raising his hand. How about others? Already working on a hybrid environment. Prithvi, Ajay, Tipu, Vaibhav. Thank you very much, guys. That's great to see. So the problem which I'm trying to mention over here, some of them are already part of that issue. Maybe some of them have already resolved it. Some of them are in, pro in process of resolving it and are trying to evaluate various security solutions. OK, that's good to see. Let's proceed further. And. Understand more details about it. So before I forget. As part of synergetics, we have two primary divisions over here. One is the learning solutions division. Which I am part of, and we also have a consulting division where we provide advisory services, where we provide managed services and implementation solutions for security. So it would be great pleasure for us. Not just to help your teams certify on security solutions, but if we can help you all implement and handhold you all to take some of the right security decisions and work with it. Let's get back to focus. So as part of this session, what we are going to discuss about is a quick overview of what is this SC 300 all about? What are the members over here? So if you look at SC 300, SC 300 is more about Microsoft identity and access administration design. Now once it comes to organizations, authentication and authorization are two very, very important aspects. Right? If you look at all Microsoft services, whether it is your Microsoft Cloud, which is Microsoft Azure, or if you look at Microsoft Intune, which is a MDM solutions, mobile device management, mobile application management solution. If you look at Microsoft 365, or even if you look at a lot of other SaaS solutions, software as a service solution, all these components, all these members are associated with a single member or a single or uh, multiple instances of this service. Which is. Microsoft Entra ID, which is a new name for Azure Active Directory. Right, so as far as your local environment is concerned, here you have Active Directory. Whereas if you look at. Third party SaaS solutions. Your. Local resources in terms of Microsoft 365. If you look at Microsoft Intune. All of them are using Microsoft Entra ID. As their identity solution provider. So as far as your users are concerned, if you recall, we are mentioning about 
users and groups. We can associate these users. We can associate these users, their respective applications and devices with local Active Directory. And we can also associate these same members with Microsoft Entra ID also. Right? Which means these local users who are just having authentication and authorization permissions with on premises environment, they will also have permissions to connect to these services. Right? Your cloud sir, Microsoft cloud services, which is Azure, Intune, Microsoft 365 and other SaaS solutions. Right? So that's the advantage or facility which is being given by Microsoft Entra ID. As part of this course, it begins with understanding the zero trust principles of Microsoft security solutions, understanding various details regarding identity solutions, and especially when we are talking about Microsoft Entra ID, it focuses on services given by Microsoft Entra, P1 and P2 license features. Okay. It focuses on P1 and P2 features, the advanced features that we have. One of the key things that you will also see is association or the mechanism of building this association between your local Active Directory. How does that work with your Microsoft Entra ID? What are the resources over here? One of the key resources that some of you all may have already worked with. There is a tool which can help you. Synchronize users between on premises to. Microsoft Entra ID. Can anybody help me with what is that tool? Which helps me migrate resources, migrate or synchronize users from on premises to. Thank you. I can see Nandan, Prithviraj. Thank you very much, guys. So the older name, as they have rightly mentioned, is Azure AD Connect. The new name is Microsoft Entra ID Connect. So this is the tool which helps us synchronize all the users from on premises Active Directory into Microsoft Entra ID. I can see somebody has said my voice is breaking. Is it for everybody? Is my voice better now? OK, thank you. Let's proceed ahead. Another important resource which my team, Mr. Manish, Archie and other colleagues, what they will be doing is they will be helping you all to make sure you all update your learn profile. In today's environment, marketing yourself, making your details available to the entire industry plays a very, very vital role. And there are more number of ways of doing that. LinkedIn, your learn profile, your certifications, they play a very, very important role on letting the industry know that you are learning something new, you have acquired new skills. 
you'll have worked on newer areas. Microsoft Learn Profile is one of the good ways of doing that. By upgrading your Learn Profile, we are telling the industry that we have acquired new knowledge and we can serve them better. We can provide more number of services, more number of features by using this new and new era or and new age technologies. As part of SC 300, you have learning resources over here. My team would post these URLs on the chat so you can refer to it. And make sure you all go through the self paced course over here. You all can go through the self paced uh, hello, course here. Yeah, Manish. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Your voice is breaking actually. I am connected on a good network. Can you rejoin your uh, check your network once again? OK, I'll do that. Let me know if it is better now. I have changed my network. Manish. Is my voice better now? Thanks, Vinod. OK. Let's proceed ahead. So after completing this self paced course. Right for every module. There is a respective learning path over here. You all can go through it. And once you have completed these learning paths. You all can redeem the badge. The URL is already shared by Manish on the chat. So you all can refer that. Just one moment. Sorry guys. Yeah, Prithviraj, you have any questions? You can put it on the chat window. I can see a hand being raised. OK. Maybe. OK. Problem. So in case you all have any questions, you all can put it on the chat window. So I was talking about the course over here. You all can go through the learning path. You can go to the respective modules over here. And done with this, you all can redeem your badge. You can update your learning profile and that will be get that will get added in the achievements section. I don't have to explain you all the significance of certification. Everybody is aware about it. So I don't see a challenge there. Now getting into the breakup of these certifications. So as part of the certification. There is 20 to 20. On. Implementing identity in Microsoft Entra ID user creation, group creation, management of the members over here. Next one is implementation of authentication and access management. Third resource over here is managing access for your applications. And finally, looking at identity governance within Microsoft Entra.
as part of today's session let's focus on the first module like i was mentioning about there are number of resources that we have within microsoft entra id especially under the license features p1 and p2 as far as the local active directory is concerned, the local active directory has been very very famous for performing different set of actions and activities and especially if you see resources over here if you see the resources over here the major resources have been dds adcs adfs ad rms and ad lds these are five major members that we have over here as far as adds is concerned this is active directory domain services as far as adcs is concerned this is certificate services as far as adfs is concerned adfs is all about federation services ad rms is concerned this is rights management services and finally ad lds which is lightweight directory services right these are five key components that we have so i don't know why it is show in a different way okay let me put it like this these are five key services that we have once it comes to your local active directory now once it comes to your microsoft entra id the major focus over here is on adds there is some part of adfs which is used over here along with this you have a separate service as as azure uh, rights management services you have support for multi factor authentication mfa as well so these are set of core components that we have which is part of our local active directory resources so what microsoft has done is microsoft has started moving some of these members or making these services available okay make these services available as part of your entra environment apart from this there are lot of other services also given by microsoft entra id which makes these services accessible and usable by the end users can i see raise of hands people who have already used p2 license as part of their organization assign that to some of the users p2 license of azure active directory okay linson is the one who has used it anybody else no one not a problem so once it comes to sc300 sc300 as a paper will focus majorly on premium p2 features the advanced feature that we have over here so 
So once we have understood about the details of the certification, let's proceed ahead with our first module. As part of today's session, as part of today's session, we'll be discussing about the first module over here with whatever time that we have. Getting into the first member that is exploring identity in Microsoft Entra ID. Just give me a moment. So before we get into more details of identity, let's understand some of the details in terms of identity. As far as identity is concerned, identity is associated with users. That's absolutely correct, but it is not meant only for users. There is identity for devices. There is identity for applications. Right. So whenever there is any contents being accessed, any resource being accessed, how do we find out who has access that? Which specific user or which specific application using which specific device? And we can have appropriate permissions. We can have appropriate uh, access permissions over here by using these combinations, right? It could be network as well. Now, when you are using these multiple combinations to allow or deny access, that is what is referred as conditional access. OK, that's what is referred as conditional access, where you assign access to a certain uh, server side resource by using combination of who's the user, which device the user is using, which application from which location, is it compromised, not compromised? So all these things are part of conditional access. So one can create conditional access policies over here. One can create multiple conditional access policies over here to make sure there's a secured way of communicating or using those services. So anyone who has used conditional access earlier? Can I see raise of hands? People who have used, Venu is the one who has used conditional access. That's great. Anybody else? Prithviraj also has used conditional access. Vaibhav, that's great to see. So there are quite a few people who have used it, which is a, and I would say this is a very, very, very good feature once it comes to your Azure Active Directory or Microsoft Entra ID P2 license. Please be careful. It's a paid service, but there are a lot of advantages that it has, that it carries. And one of the main member over here is making sure we have a uh, number of filters to have restricted access to the critical contents. Let's proceed ahead. Let's start with identity landscape. I have already mentioned about some of the details from identity perspective. I'm sure everybody has understood that point. So what is the purpose of identity within an organization? And even before that, what is the identity landscape at Microsoft? What all things it covers and what are the key resources that we have within our member over here? 
let's understand that because this will play a very very important role in setting up the complete environment setting up the complete resources that we have over here Venu has a very good, important question. We have a E5 license which includes P2. That, that's a very important point. So E5, E1, E3, these are Office 365 licenses. Whereas P1, P2, these licenses are for Microsoft Entra ID or Azure Active Directory licenses. Thanks, Venu, for the input. Anybody else has any questions, doubts? You can put it on the chat window. I'll be more than happy to answer them. While we are discussing about identity, let's first understand about a zero trust security. What is this model all about? Zero trust lies on three core principles. First is verify explicitly. If I say I'm AVP at uh, Synergetics, so the Synergetics as a uh, organization should allow me without authentication right? Allow me to access any kind of information within Synergetics. That will be a wrong thing to ask, right? And at times, if somebody tries to uh, sneak or do a phishing with my ID, my credentials, they can get hands on lot of other critical information within the organization, right? Which I would never want to happen. So once it comes to zero trust, it says verify explicitly. If you say you are Om Prakash, please prove. I will send you a OTP message on the registered phone number. I will send you a pin code on a registered email address. So please respond to that. Please access that details, which will automatically prove which will automatically prove that you are Om Prakash, right? That's verify explicitly. Now, before I proceed ahead, so can you all help me? What is the resource which will help me in doing this explicit verification? Which resource or which feature do you all feel? Thank you, Linson. Multi-fact authentication. Yes, Authenticator app. Thanks, Sai. So there are different set of options that we have today. We have options for biometrics implementation as well, which will help us enforce explicit verification. Second important member. Thanks, Nandan. Thanks, Prithvi. Another important resource that you all see over here is use least privileges. Okay. Now, very, very important aspect use least privileges. Now, what is the meaning of use least privileges? Every time, as a fresher, when I begin my journey, the easiest thing for me within my organization would be to create all users and give them global admin permissions. OK, so if I give all the users global admin privileges, global admin role, do you think I'm using a least privilege? Yes, no, maybe. Linson says no. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. So I'm seeing yeah, so that's privilege. Least privilege would mean depending upon what role you are performing. So Manish in my team, he's head of the marketing department, right? So on that, yes, thanks a lot, Prithvi. Role based access control, and that's what I was talking about. So depending upon which user has logged in, what role that user has to perform within the organization. 
we will need to create corresponding role based access control. And I am not sure if I already have respective roles for every person. It may not exist. Can I go and create a custom role myself? What do you will say? Can I create a custom role within Microsoft Entra? Thanks, Vinod. Thank you, Venu. Yep. So, and again, in this scenario, you all will require a P2 kind of license. It cannot be done in free license. Please be aware of that. Right? So, when you are working with P2 license, P1 license, you can create your custom roles over here. So, you're talking about Microsoft Entra. This is the new URL, people who are not aware about this, entra.microsoft.com. And within entra.microsoft.com, you all will be able to see different set of resources organized over here. Entitlement management, privileged identity management, working with hybrid management using Microsoft Entra Connect. Some of you all already mentioned about it. Here you have roles and admins. I'm sorry, this is disabled for me right now. New custom role, delete custom role. Because for these custom roles, I would need Microsoft Entra ID Premium P1 or P2. And this is what I was mentioning about. If you see the roles over here, application administration, administrator, application developer, global administrator, directory writers, global reader. So there are lot of privileged roles over here, lot of simple roles that we have. Teams administrator. Search editor, printer technician. Depending upon what role you want an individual to perform within the organization, you can give them appropriate permissions using these roles. These are called role based access control. Right? So verify explicitly using multi fact authentication. Used least use least privileges by creating and using appropriate roles. Third one, assume breach. Always, I have built a system, right? And you all must have seen recently the war that is happening between Israel and Hamas, right? Even they had much more secured system which got broken, right? You all must have heard about. COVID pretty recently, lot of organizations had to move in their. Uh, have, have to implement their digital strategy immediately, right? Again, an issue. Right, so there are a lot of things which are unknown, lot of security solutions which have to be implemented at the last moment. There are so many attacks. Cyber attacks which have been happening recently on different government sector, private sector, lot of uh, important personal data being lost out, right? All these things have happened because people have assumed that nothing is going to break their security. And that's where these problems happen, right? So whether it is physical security, whether it is cyber security, if you want to make sure we are on top of the toes always create security measures by assuming that there will be a breach so if there is a breach then what next then how should i take care of it okay so once you look at assume breach can anybody help me with how am i going to 
track that there has been a attack on how do we work with that? How do we track where this issue has originated? Right? Is there a pre-existing framework that we have within Microsoft which can help us track these kind of attacks? Anyone, any idea? Nobody? Okay, not a problem. So once it comes to Microsoft Defender, not bad. Good guess. So here, once it comes to your attack and capturing the details about this, you have a predefined framework over here, which is called as MITRE. This attack framework, which tells you at what stages your defense has been compromised. Where is the issue over here? This is called as military attack framework, MITRE. And within Microsoft, you have something called as Microsoft Sentinel. Here you have Microsoft Sentinel. Thanks, Nandan. So using Microsoft Sentinel, this will help us verify or keep a track where this attack has originated. And we can and what are the precautionary measures that one can take when we are working with these when, when we are handling these kind of attacks? How should be our response mechanism? How are we going to work with it? All these things will be part of your attack framework and within Microsoft it is Sentinel. So this is the first member which is zero trust. Second resource that you'll see over here is identity management. Right now, once it comes to your identity, I already mentioned about that with my one note that identity can be mapped with use identity is required for users, devices, applications. Now, in terms of creating this identity, Creating and mapping this identity. There are multiple ways of doing it. So one way over here is. Cloud identity. So users and their respective accounts being created within Microsoft Entra. Second resource over here. Would be guest identities. And the third member over here The third member over here would be synchronized or federated identities. Right? Third member over here would be your synchronized identities. These are three possible identities that we have. Once it comes to Microsoft Enter ID. Apart from this, if you look at the next member over here, which is B2B, B2C, right? As far as B2B is concerned, B2B, I would say, is an extension of the guest identities. Whereas B2C is concerned, B2C would be extension of cloud identities where you have other identity providers like Facebook, Twitter, right? 
there are other security providers that we want to work with. So you must have seen various websites where we have options, whether you want to log in using Microsoft Azure Active Directory, you have to log in using Facebook, Twitter, Google, right? So mention, select that option and mention the credentials for it. That's referred as B2C. Because I would not, uh, because the end user may not want to create their identities every now and then. Right, so that's the core purpose. Why people would use things like B2C. So before I proceed ahead, can I see raise of hands? People who have configured B2C within their organization. Anyone who has configured B2C within their organization? No one? OK, not a problem. So we can assist you with that. So any kind of details that you all need regarding how do you set up a B2C? What would be the mechanism of the policy creation over here? We can help you with that. Moving on to the third section over here, that is actions. So first is your zero trust. How do you implement zero trust? Work, working with identity, right? Uh, before I forget this, once it comes to B2C, B2C is not implementable just using Entra ID. B2C would require Microsoft Entra ID. And along with this, this is also this will also require Azure subscription. It requires both these members together. Right? Just having Microsoft Entra ID is not sufficient for B2C. Moving to the third member over here, which is authentication. Authentication of the user would mean having an appropriate ID or an account created. Authorization using role based access control, like we mentioned earlier. We can configure or administer authorization. So, if you are giving privileges to a user, till what time? One day, two day, two months, three months, till what time do you want to? Give those permissions or allow them, allow the user to access those resources. Correct. And especially when you are recruiting us from Synergetics, saying Om Prakash and your uh, Om Prakash and his team can come to our organization, perform these set of actions on our Active Directory resource, Microsoft Entra ID resource, right? So you all should also keep a track that whatever has been asked for, whatever has been discussed, only two set of tasks and activities are being performed. Right? So by mistake, you should not create any additional resource or give any additional permissions to the users. Right? To avoid those kind of things, you have audit reports. So how much was being asked for, what has been implemented, Right, anything, any mistakes or issues which has been created. All those things can be verified over here. Right, so starting with zero trust. Set up identities over here. Check for various actions being performed. From a usage point of view. I have already mentioned about the licenses, right? P1, P2 licenses, depending upon what advanced features one would want. So once it comes to these permissions, uh, uh, sorry, once it comes to these licenses, this is per user license. This is per user license. So 
So what is the cost for every user? And within a specific month. This is the licensing model. This is the licensing model that we have once it comes to your P1 or P2 licenses. And finally, see, even after putting so many restrictions, ensuring everything is being managed, monitored, still things can go wrong. So it does not mean that once I have set up, things will never go wrong. Things can still go wrong. So that's the reason why we have to keep verifying these key, these things, keep monitoring these things, detect it, respond it. And from a response mechanism point of view, I already mentioned about Microsoft Sentinel, which is a SIEM tool. Uh, sorry, not just SIEM. It's also a SO tool. Can anybody, uh, can anybody help me with what is the meaning of SO tool? S O A R. Seam and SOAR. So, SEAM is in terms of security incidents and event management. So, there is, there is any incident which has happened. How do we track that? What is a SOAR tool? Okay. Thanks, Linson. Thanks, Nandan. Security orchestration and automation. So once these kind of incidents happen, I cannot wait for a manual action. It has to be an automated action. It has to be an automated action over here. And this automation response that we are giving, this can be using a function, this can be done using a logic app, right? How, how you want to respond to it, that's up to us. So I hope this single slide talks a lot about what are the features that we have within Microsoft. Believe me, guys, I have just touched the overview or the uh, top surface of this. There are a lot of information, a lot of implementation using relevant labs, right? I'm sure everybody knows about these labs. These labs actually are making sure we practice these things number of times. We practice these things again and again, get our uh, get ourselves trained on how do you manage the resources that we have. Right, that's a core purpose of providing respective labs when we are when you are taking certification courses from us. So before we go to the next section, get into more details of this. Let's take a quick break. And once we are back, Archie has some important aspects to discuss with you all. And then we will continue further with more aspects of our session over here. OK, guys, so grab a cup of tea or coffee. Let's assemble back in 10 minutes.
Hello, guys. Sir is on break till that time. Here you can see the learning achievement badge for SC300. You just have to follow the step to redeem your badge. Guys, get your redeem now only. We already shared a uh, uh, learning achievement batch link in chat box. Hello, Archie, are you there? Yes, sir. Have you shared a learning achievement badge? Yeah. I already shared, on, sir. On email or chat box? On chat, on chat. Okay. Guys, please uh, redeem now. Just click on the link. Okay. And go to uh, Microsoft Learn site. Click on sign in button. Just sign in using your Microsoft login, or you can create uh, your login there with your Outlook, Hotmail, or Live ID. Then go to URL and redeem your badge. That's it. Then you can uh, directly add uh, this badge add to your uh, LinkedIn profile also. Those who have done, please uh, react. Yes, yes, or thumbs up. If you have any difficulties, please raise your hand so we can help you to redeem this badge. Dear all, please redeem your badge ASAP. 
so we can start the session in few minutes. Guys, please type yes if you redeem the badge. So we can get to know uh, how many people are redeeming their badge. Okay, these are limited badge. Can you please uh, redeem ASAP? Thank you, Mega. Thanks, Vidhi. Vinod, thank you. Thanks, Rohit. Abhijit, Ajit, Anish, Ashfaq, Ashok, Ashwin, Debu, please redeem your badge. Vincent, Nandan, Nikita. Thanks, Nilesh and Prithviraj. Only six, seven people are there. Ah, okay, you are doing good. You can uh, log in with your uh, existing email ID. It's no issue. Yes, Nandan, tell me. One minute. Yes, Nandan, I'm opening your mic, okay? You can uh, speak now. First, what's uh, like which link I need to log in this learn dot Microsoft, right? Uh, you have your Microsoft login ID. Yeah, I have an ID. Uh, you don't have a you have. I have. Uh, login with your same ID, no? No issues. Which link the um, first step step? Any any go to URL wala link. That's you can one second. Uh, go to learn Microsoft. Uh, I'm sharing resharing. Okay. Yes, Nandan, I have shared a link with you on chat yeah. box. Okay, you can uh, go to that link, just sign in, just logged in, then uh, copy paste this above uh, learning achievement badge link and just ready it in same window. Okay. Like what shall I do now? Like I entered that one, click on register. It is showing Microsoft Ignite. No, no, no. You can just uh, log into uh, your account, Microsoft account. Yeah, From, I logged uh, in. Right in. Hotmail yes. account. Yes, logged in. Yeah. Yes. Then just copy this uh, URL one second. I'm sharing. Then go to this URL. Copy this URL and paste in the same uh, browser. Yeah. Okay, now just ready meet. Yeah. 
it is yeah it's showing reading yes okay just click it that's it anyone has the issue abhijit anish ashok ashwin most of people are not uh, reading me i think i have redeemed it where i have to check reading badges uh go to your profile and check if uh, sc300 uh, badge badge will be added or not yeah i am on my profile uh, i can see modules you can see badges retain that's it yes yes but i like where i can see sc or can you drop me your mail so we can uh, uh, take it this uh, offline okay okay mail me on uh, like i can see 18 badges and draw like i can't see sc300 no oh, it won't show anything called 300 a i can see 18 badges that was climbed on today itself yeah learning paths i can see sc300 let me check one second we need to check on sc like learning paths only right yes yes learning paths only right Yeah, courses. I clicked. I can see one badge. Microsoft Identity and Access Admin. Yes, Microsoft Identity and Access Administration. Right. That's the that is the badge actually. Okay. So already added. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vipul, you can uh open in uh, incognito window and use redeem the badge. Okay, wait. No issue. Anyone left? I think most of people are not redeeming the badge. It's very useful, guys. You can uh, add this badge badge to your LinkedIn profile also. Okay. Uh, Om Prakash, can uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. you can start can it, i see uh, raise of hands people who have successfully redeemed the badge so i can see three hands being raised how about others i can see nandan also is done so people who have not redeemed the badge up to now please go ahead redeem your badges meanwhile you are doing that let me proceed ahead so before the break we discussed about the first member that is identity landscape at microsoft where we mentioned about five key points over here which is zero trust working with various identity options what actions one can take its usage and finally this is an end to end process that has to be maintained and we have to make sure that this continuous cycle because after we have implemented these hackers don't stop they will try creating a new uh, new attack options and get into the pre existing pre existing systems 
capture details within that. Right. So we will also have to make sure we maintain our security measures on day to day basis. So there are multiple approaches that one can see. So first approach that you see is the classic approach, the older one. And we also have a new approach. Now when we talk about the new approach over here earlier, what was happening is everybody has to come to the office, right? Within office. There is a uh, dedicated machine which is being given to everyone. These machines will have all the required antivirus softwares being installed. Every everyone is connected to the organization's network. Right? All the connections are happening via firewall, the local proxy that we have. Right? Today, those kind of things don't exist anymore. The reason being with work from home culture, and like I mentioned about COVID earlier, number of us would be working from home using our own devices, which is referred as BYOD, right? We have our own devices through which we are accessing the organizational content. We may be accessing these contents using different applications, which could be a custom built application, organize or uh, organizational apps, third party apps, right? This would be the organizational data would be getting accessed by using unsafe or unprotected Wi-Fi as well. We will be accessing it from home, accessing it from client environment, from a hotel, right? While we are traveling, we still need to access the organizational contents. So there would be number uh, and uh, not to forget about the last icon over here is accessing some of the documents which are highly critical in nature. And as an organizational member, we would not want uh, people to print it, forward it, share it with anybody outside the organizational domain. That would be one of the key member over here once it comes to your zero trust implementation. The one thing I don't understand, how do I combine all these policies together? Or how do I combine all these aspects together? Checking for a uh, secure network, checking for a device, whether it is a hybrid joint device or not, checking for whether it is a uh, uh, organizational laptop, which application we are trying to access. So how do we check for all these members? Anybody, any idea? And once all these features are being verified, only then we should allow the user to access a content. Anyone, any idea? How do we check for these number of options? No one. So if you all recall, this is where I was mentioning about conditional access. And as part of conditional access, that's where you can verify or work with number of such input parameters. Just give me one moment. Let me log into another environment which I have using a private window. Entra.microsoft.com. And in this scenario, what I have done is I have used multi factor authentication. And like somebody rightly mentioned,
I'm using an authenticator app. Installed on my mobile phone. Map with thumbprint identity. Entra dot Microsoft dot com. And if I go to the overview section. Here you all can see the license which I'm using, which is Microsoft Entra ID P2. There are three devices being registered, three applications being registered, 10 groups, and there are 21 users which are mapped over here. So you can see a sneak peek view of the entire environment over here of a specific tenant which I'm dealing with right now. Under protection area here, if you all see, I have identity protection, conditional access, password reset, number of features over here. Let me go to conditional access. And as part of our session, what we help you all understand is how do you apply these policies over here? And if you all see, there are two ways of doing it. One is you can take a blank template. Create your policy using the blank template or you can use pre existing templates given by Microsoft. So whatever. Security features one might want to implement, you have a predefined set of rules over here. Using these templates. Can you see this require multi fact authentication for Azure management? Require compliant or hybrid Azure AD joint device or multi fact authentication for all the users. Require multi fact authentication. The different categories over here. Block legacy authentication mode. Anybody who is trying to access Microsoft admin portal. That person should go through multi factor authentication. Require phishing resistant multi factor authentication for admins. So, what is the specialization that you want to map over here? We were talking about zero trust security. So, what are the templates being mapped in, in that context? If you want to use any of these templates, we can do that. Or we can use a blank template over here. If you see a blank template. Which users? Which groups? So do you want to create these rules for internal users or you want to create these groups for external users? Do you want to exclude any users? You can mention that over here. If you look at the target resources. Which specific cloud application you'd want to. Select. We can specify these details over here. So to check for Azure DevOps, Dataverse, Microsoft. Flow service, which is Power Automate. Microsoft Intune. Azure rights management services. Privileged identity management solution. So it's up to us. Which portal or which resource we want to map over here. We want to restrict access. So these external users while they are trying to access these target resources. What conditions you want to check? So if this condition evaluates to true, I may allow or I may block those users. So it's up to me. 
So all external users, when they are trying to access these two target applications, if they have high user risk, if they have high sign-in risk, they are trying to access this resource using Windows phone, which is no longer in circulation right now. If they are trying to access from any location, if they are trying to access from legacy authentication clients, right? So keeping all these conditions in mind, high user risk, high sign in risk, legacy device platforms, any locations using a uh, Windows environment. What do I want to do? Simple, I want to block access. I don't want them to allow access to these target resources. Are you getting it? There are a lot of other factors also within grant access where you may want to grant access provided we get the right multi-factor authentication, provided we have authentication strength, right? Provided we have Microsoft Entra hybrid joint. So even if you want to grant access, there are different ways of doing that. But in my case, I'm saying, if these are the scenarios, these are the conditions being met, I would want to block access. So I hope this makes sense for you all. Right now, what I'm showing you quickly in, in a uh, in few minutes, this would there will be a complete lab for it. Where we have right set of mapping of these resources. And you all will see this in complete action once we go to our certification sessions. So I hope it made sense for you all in whatever I showed you all here. Moving on to the next member over here, that is Microsoft Trust Principles. Now, most of the aspects I have already discussed in my prior conversation. But still, there will be certain new aspects which I would want you all to take a look at. Meanwhile, I would also want to share a link with you all. What I love the most in this uh, new avatar that Microsoft has been going through, there is a pretty detailed documentation regarding every aspect that you'll see. Even if you look at the zero trust framework, there is a complete guidance over here. Starting from the understanding point of view, implementation point of view, what are the steps involved over here? Right. And one thing that you all would realize is this is an end to end kind of solution that Microsoft is trying to provide. Rather than just mentioning that do this, do that and forget about it. Right. There is a complete end to end detail that you'll see. And I should not men uh, forget to mention about the partner ecosystem that Microsoft has developed over a period of time where a lot of partners pitch in. They provide the needed assistance to the customers and make sure that everybody is able to understand and implement these things, implement these resources. Just to make sure I don't forget about it. There is something called as Microsoft Misa. Before I proceed further with this, can I see a raise of hands? People who are aware about what is Microsoft Misa? I'm not sure. Suddenly the hand raise is going down. Anyone who is aware about Microsoft Misa, M-I-S-A? No one? 
Okay, not a problem. As far as Visa is concerned, this is called as Microsoft Intelligent Security Association. What is the core purpose of Misa? As far as Misa is concerned, it very clearly says that if you already have any pre-existing solution or pre-existing resource being added within your uh, uh, on-premises environment, or if you have a, a pre-existing cloud environment, number of multi-platform devices, don't worry. We are there to assist you. We are there to help you integrate your existing security solution with Microsoft solutions over here. And you'll see a complete set of details. I'm talking about Microsoft Defender, Microsoft Sentinel. I'm talking about compliance perspective. There are plenty of information, plenty of details available under each of these areas. One more thing which I want to showcase over here is the partner ecosystem and what are the members available here? Yeah, I think this is the one. And you all will be more than surprised to see the partnerships or associations that we have. Within the industry. And it very clearly says that if you have any pre existing software products, or if you have a pre existing software solution, you can go and associate that with. Microsoft Security Solution. The core purpose of mentioning these things is none of your investments that you are doing will be a problem because Microsoft Make sure that whatever investments you have made in any of the if you have made investments in any of the pre existing security solutions, right? You can continue with that. And at the same time, you can also leverage on the benefits of Microsoft Security Solution. So it's not either or. Either I use Microsoft or I use my third party solutions. It's not that way. I have already shared this link on the chat window. You all can see the member names. And this is what I was talking about. I'm 100% sure. Whichever is your current security solution that should be mentioned over here that would be available within this. Or if it is not mentioned here, you can connect to Microsoft. They can provide you their partner connect. Through which we can get resources. These are the product integrations that we have within Microsoft environment. Now some of them are not part of your. Current uh, security solution. Uh, sorry, uh, current certification, which is SC 300. There are many of them which are part of SC 200 Microsoft Defender. Some of them are part of SC 400 from a certification point of view, but from a solution point of view. These are set of members that one can work with. 
is a complete laundry list of all the members over here. Let me proceed further. So this was about a quick understanding of Microsoft Zero Trust and especially in terms of Misa. Now, while I was mentioning verify explicitly, I did mention about user identity, location, checking for device health, and all these things I mentioned as part of the conditional access policy. Another member in terms of least privileged access where we discussed about various role based access control. We mentioned about roles over here. You have other principles like just in time access. OK, there, ca there can be a time window and. Using this time window, we can specify whether we are giving these permissions for an hour, two hours, three hours or for a specific duration. So giving permissions does not mean that it is for an infinite period of time. It will be for a limited period of time. So even if I promote Om Prakash, who is a consultant from Synergetics, he is working on a specific project within my organization. He will be given permissions for that. Uh, one, one or one or two days where uh, there is a leave within the organization, right? Where he can he and his team can perform various activities to ensure we have a higher security score. I'm. 100% sure that people would have. Used the security center. Pretty often. Security.microsoft.com. Where one can see the security score of the organization. So once we connect with an organization, we get into a uh, managed contract with an organization. Our core focus is to make sure we make the environment, we make the resources more and more compliant and increase the security score of that organization. Right. There are number of tools available. Checking for threat analytics. Checking for actions and submissions. So what are the recommended actions? So what Microsoft does is. By the time it is showing. What are the currently mapped resources? It also shows that if you have to increase these points. What are the ways of doing that? What changes or updates we need to do in the current environment? Right, so we're working with just in time access, checking for risk based adaptive policies. In terms of assuming breach. Some of these aspects like segmented access to network, user devices, app awareness. There are two ways of implementing it. One is via Azure by using virtual networks and resources there. And apart from this. We can have Microsoft Intune where we can have device based policies. While we have been looking at a lot of third party tools, right? Each tool. Would be accessing some of these aspects, some of these. Elements out of the complete end to end solution. So once it comes to Microsoft, it's not just about identity or management of endpoints using. Microsoft Intune. Or data management using Microsoft Defender solutions, cloud apps management, infrastructure management, network security. So this is an end to end solution that we are looking at. And that's the advantage which Microsoft brings in. Right. And when I say uh, infrastructure, this infrastructure 
would be in terms of company owned devices hybrid devices customer based devices it can also be iot based devices all these things are implemented using a single solution over here so if you look at your conditional access i would need you all to take your time understand the details over here because from my perspective i have already showcased these things using the tool which is conditional access tool within my microsoft entra conditional access checking for the user identity checking for what data the user is trying to access which application the user is trying to access we can specify the location network over here which device or which endpoint the user is using to connect to that environment if you look at the underlying architectural framework that we have so there will be two aspects or two ways of how one can see these members so one way of looking at these resources or working with these members is from a task point of view implementation of resources over here second approach over here is from an architectural perspective from an architectural point of view here we have a cloud adoption framework before i proceed ahead can i see raise of hands who are aware about cloud adoption framework caf perspective can i see raise of hands people who have worked with caf okay not a problem so as far as cloud adoption framework is concerned this is primarily a complete process which is being followed from phase number 1 starting from requirement gathering understanding the business requirements understanding the uh, underlying expectations from the end user right creating the complete blueprint creating a complete baseline and the complete process of how we will be we are going to migrate all the resources from on premises to azure or set up a smooth hybrid environment over here for association between both these environments that is on premises and azure environment how these things are going to happen that is being defined using cloud adoption framework and one of the key members that we have with our cloud adoption framework would be identity management right so apart from all these members having identity management as a key resource how many users what will be the phases and within each phase how many users we are going to migrate or move from on premises to azure right so that would be a key member over here so if you see your identity baseline that's one key resource over here second member that you'll see is your well architected framework and even within this you have identity and access management as one of the core pillars over here so whether you go for cloud adoption framework as your strategy or you are using well architected framework in both these scenarios we are going to use identity because that will behave as a primary member just a quick glance through what these resources are let me also share the link with you all so you all can go through it and understand the members over here about identity baseline
many of us would be under a wrong impression that identity management is a pretty small area and anybody and everybody can go and handle that believe me on this it's a pretty vast as a subject lot of things can go wrong if things are not planned and executed properly so if you look at your cloud adoption framework especially looking at identity baseline we need to first check for what would be the business risks over here what is the policy and compliance that one needs to implement right what are the processes that one would need to create over here and in case some of these processes are not followed there is the violations which are happening how do we capture that and what is our response mechanism to it guys once it comes to procuring these licenses like i have been mentioning earlier p2 license p1 license nothing comes for free there will be additional cost involved for it when we are creating resources like azure firewall when you are creating machines and enforcing security uh, aspects to it there will be cost involved with it right and we need to inform the management saying that these are the additional costs that are involved to make sure we have a right set of security benchmark for ourselves now once it comes to security requirements security expectations every user or every corporate or an every enterprise they would have a pretty high expectation from a security point of view but once it comes to the cost factor they are really bamboozled and saying that no 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 om prakash this is pretty expensive see as far as security is concerned cost will always be involved there but we will have to make sure we classify these resources correctly organize these members correctly and make sure we have a right set of understanding between the end users and the uh, organization management to help them understand the significance of these resources can i see raise of hands people who have been using firewall solutions internally i'm not saying microsoft even non microsoft and i'm fine with that firewall solutions no one that seems surprising okay thanks lenson that's perfect so i can see rohit has raised his hand thanks rohit now the reason why i brought this point so you can put your hand down the reason why i brought this point over here <laughs> uh that that i would say that's a wrong assumption to make once it comes to any organization there will always be some critical data some critical information and forget about that even your identity the user profile itself is pretty critical right you all can imagine uh, your your photographs or personal details being hacked okay okay i i get, get it right yeah see many a times these resources are being handled by a separate team so even if there is a firewall solution we are not aware on that 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 could be another possibility why nobody was raising hand because this is taken care by a separate administration team within the organization but yeah i agree to you so in terms of well architected framework and if you look at one of the security pillars over here you have identity and access management so for any successful or any successful implementation of identity solutions 
you'll need to use Azure Active Directory, which was the older name. The new name that we have is Microsoft Entra. And within our on-premises, this is where I began my session. So you all will see. On-premises environment. Having ADDS in Azure joined to on-premises forest. Extension of Active Directory Federation services. Do they have mentioned architecture, but I don't see any architectural diagram over here. So if you see this, I think this is a pretty good diagram as compared to what I had drawn earlier. Your on premises environment. Which could be connected to the partner network. And within your on premises environment, you have ADFS, ADFS servers, ADDS server. So once it comes to your federation with other organizations, other organization active directories. That's where you require ADFS. And to make these services available. On a cloud environment, we will need to have a gateway. Right, which is required for your site to site connectivity. How many of you all are already working on Azure platform? Can I see raise of hands? Using Azure services. OK, so I can see three hands being raised. OK, Prasviraj is also working on Azure. Thank you guys, put your hands down. So people who are already working with Azure. People who are already working with Azure would be able to understand that once it comes to your. Integration with resources. Right? You can set up these virtual networks. You can set up these environments locally, or you can set up these environments on Azure platform as well. It's up to us. So when you are setting up a hybrid environment, this is how your on premises would look like. Your ADFS web, uh, web application proxy, ADFS servers, and ADDS and all of them would be in a load balanced kind of environment. Because there will be more than one machines. That you will have within your on prem resources. Sanjay, I'm I'm sorry we have we are short on time today, but yes, I would want to. Extend this conversation further. And uh, once you enroll for our certification session, I would love to showcase how these things are being built. How uh, uh, Azure AD Connect environment is being set up for migrating users from on premises to our Microsoft Entra as a resource. And if I show you here, I have already migrated some of the users. Can you see this? On premises directory synchronization. I have already moved some of the users from my on premises to my cloud environment. Let me proceed ahead with the next section over here. I have already mentioned about why identity. Just to make sure I have not skipped any point. Authentication, authorization, auditing, administration. Right, so some of these aspects we have already discussed. Once it comes to our identity provider. 
right now you are using Microsoft Entra as our identity provider. So this is an important diagram which I tried explaining earlier through words. This is more understandable as a uh, diagram over here in terms of applications. If you see app stores that you'll see devices, your on premises environment, right? Hackers. Many, uh, many important aspects over here would be taken care by the IoT devices and applications running on top of that. Right. Your databases that we have database or data store oriented applications. Federations with third party members. All of these associations that you will see over here are mapped to our. Identity. So whenever you are accessing any resource, the first thing that we have to establish is who are you? What tasks or what activities one can perform as a authorized member and that authorization is associated with that particular identity. So what is the role that we perform right now getting from a top level perspective to a specific tasks and day-to-day uh, -day activities that we would perform? So first aspect is creating that identity, creating the users, creating the groups. Right. You have provisioning and deprovisioning of resources, correct? Synchronization of identities, which I was talking about. Just give me one moment. Now, once it comes to identity synchronization, what are the ways of identity synchronization? If anybody can help me with that. What are the ways of identity synchronization? Thanks, Linson. We have password hash authentic uh, password hash synchronization. And again, that's part of Azure AD Connect. What is the second one? Nandan says password policy sync. Second is pass through. Pass through synchronization. Third member over here would be. Third member over here would be. Federated synchronization. Rohit is mentioning about Cloud Connect. I have not used Cloud Connect as yet. Thanks, Rohit. So these are the three that I have already used. Password hash synchronization, pass through authentication, and federated synchronization. In terms of federated synchronization, this is where we require ADFS. As far as pass through authentication is concerned, this is where you will have a pass through agent which needs to be installed on the client machines. Whereas password hash synchronization is concerned. This is more like. Creating copy of users. Right. Taking a copy of users within our. Uh, Microsoft Entra and even if you don't have connectivity with your on premises environment, we can still work with it. So these are three primary ways of identity synchronization which I have used till now. Cloud Connect, I will have to explore. What are the features behind the scene? Once it comes to this group management, 
Linson has a very important question. Thanks, Linson. Now, once it comes to identity synchronization, identity synchronization primarily is one way. It's not a two way kind of communication, but there are features like password write back. There is a feature called as password write back, which is an exception to the earlier point which I mentioned. Linson, does it, does it answer your question? Say for example, once you have synchronized a user, if you modify the password uh, property of that user, and again, <laughs> this will not happen on its own, we will have to configure the password write back. OK, if you have configured a password right back, then it will work. It can synchronize the password of that user within our on prem environment as well. But apart from that, all other properties that you have, those properties are only one way. So password write back is an exception which has to be configured. Other properties, they don't write back. As far as group and device management is concerned, let me mention a very important aspect over here, which you all can leverage on. So once it comes to your premium P2 license, so here if you all see, AD sync browse, AD sync operators. There are number of members over here. Which have been synchronized from on premises environment. So here if I go to the groups over here. OK, so you can see three uh, membership types over here. So first type that we have is assigned where I assign a user within a particular group. There are other two members over here, which is dynamic user. And dynamic device. Anyone who has worked with. These membership types. Dynamic user, dynamic device. No one. OK, so Rohit has worked on it. So once it comes to dynamic user, dynamic device here, what we can do is we can. Specify a query over here. And based on this query, if you see this. Based on the query profile type device ID. Device model. You can check for. An operator over here specify the value and based on this. Condition being satisfied. It will add that device into a specific group. Same thing holds true with the user as well. OK, and within this user. Here we can specify. Based on name, surname, user type, usage, location. Country name of the company. So based on any of these user properties or attributes, we can check for a condition and we can add them into a specific group. Again, as far as this dynamic group or dynamic. Uh, dynamic device or dynamic user is concerned. These features are available. These features are available only as part of your. Premium P2 resource. They are not available. These members are not available as part of. 
free tier license right so please be careful of this so if you see this entire paper sc 300 most of the questions over here would be based on these advanced features so my recommendation to all of you all would be to uh, try these new features you can take a take a trial of p2 right microsoft entra id p2 trial create resources over here right and try these labs now the, there would be challenges in terms of installing these things on your local machine doing the synchronization right so what we can do is we can assist you all by providing a LODS environment lab on demand where you all can try out these things without having to disturb your existing environment. OK. My suggestion to all of you all, if you are going for Azure free trial, don't redeem the free trial by using your organization ID. Because if you use organization ID, then you cannot access or you will not have complete permissions on the Azure Active Directory. OK, so never use your organization ID when you're doing any kind of R&D or when you're trying to learn something new. Try this on your Hotmail ID, Gmail ID or. Non organization ID. I hope that makes sense to you all. OK. So once it comes to your administration. Creation of users, creation of groups, initiating the synchronization over here. Enabling. Self service password reset. Right. Creating appropriate groups over here. You can use a assigned group which is more manual in nature. Or you can initiate a dynamic group over here, so automatically based on the user properties. It will go and add itself. Wow. This is something which is very, very interesting for me. Creation of users need not always be using the Microsoft Entra portal, though it's a uh, it's it's good looking. No problem with that. But one challenge which can happen over here is creating users. Again, if, and if you want to add multiple users over here, this will be pretty time consuming. And especially. When you are looking at multiple environments, multiple tenants over here from uh, uh, dev test point of view, staging and QA point of view, then going to a production environment. Creating multiple users within each and every tenant that will be a humongous task. Right, giving them appropriate roles, permissions. That's true, Linson. So here what we can do is we can create a template for it. You can. Uh, you can create a template, create your functions over here, partial functions. And just to share with you all what I did is when when, when I was working with uh, one of my consulting projects, I had all the users and their up uh, their appropriate properties within XML file. So what I did was I used partial to read the contents from that XML file. Right name of the user display name location. I was reading all those things from the XML file and then I was creating my resources. Because I had to create that in four environments. In dev test in staging in QA and then in production. So production was already there. Production was already there in existence. Other three environments. I had three different XML files for it. So rather than going into that partial script and changing it every now and then I would I would prefer to go into a XML and make that change in PowerShell. I had a loop which will read every line from that XML file and create the users there. Right, so that's what I did. When I was uh, working with my project. But like Linson mentioned correctly. We can automate these kind of processes using a template, using appropriate set of resources. Right, which will minimize your time taken 
for creating these foundational resources. Let's take another break over here before we proceed further with our session. There is a lot of interesting aspects to discuss. Thank you very much for making this session interactive. Grab a cup of tea or coffee. Guys, I already shared feedback form. Please fill this feedback form. I'm sharing again. Yes, please fill this feedback form. I already shared that. If you are done with feedback form, please message me in chat box or else uh, raise your hand that I can know that. Here I can see the name Abhijit, Azit, Akansha, Ashok. Please fill this feedback form. We value our feedback.
थैंक यू टीपू थैंक यू पृथ्वीराज थैंक यू लिंसॉन अशोक अश्विन देबू किसावन प्लीज फील दिस फीडबॉम फॉर guys it re really appreciate for us if you could take a moment to share your thought please fill this feedback form only three are done others i am waiting for your response guys before webinar and make sure you all are filled at feedback form at the end welcome back everyone before i proceed ahead can i see raise of hands people who are back
So Nilesh is back. Ajag is back. Ruthvi is there. Can I see raise of hands, people who are back? Akanksha is there. Linson is back. Thank you guys. Put your hands down. Let's proceed ahead. So before the break, we are discussing about some of the key aspects of Microsoft Entra. What are the key resources over here? Right? Understanding number of elements and entities, which is part of Microsoft Premium, uh, Microsoft Entra ID, P2 license. While we are working with these resources in terms of users, groups, one more aspect that one should be aware about is the development aspect over here. So programmatically, how one can access these aspects. So once it comes to Microsoft environment, you have Microsoft Graph. So once it comes to Microsoft 365 resources, your Windows client environment, your EMS resources, enterprise mobility and mobility suit that we have. All these elements, all these resources that we have. They are also accessible. Via Microsoft Graph API. So if you have the primary aspect over here, that is getting the token, getting the resource being associated. The next step that one can perform is we can extract this information get these details using the graph API. Now, once it comes to your graph based resources. So here you have a pre existing tool given by Microsoft, which is Microsoft Graph Explorer. And using this Graph Explorer tool, using this Graph Explorer tool, we can access details from the underlying environment. Make sure we log in over here. And apart from logging in, we also need to provide uh, permissions for accessing set of details that we have within our underlying environment. So I've logged in successfully using the right tenant. Right, so I can see the email address and all the other user profile information that I may have mapped over here, right? Apart from this, here if you see on left hand side, there are a lot of pre existing members, pre existing queries that we have. So, depending upon what resources I may have created, OneNote, OneDrive, and using this Graph Explorer, it will provide both the information, both the details. Right, and two things over here. One is we should have the required data behind the scene, and second, like I said, you need to have permissions on each of these members. Right, so earlier you are facing an issue saying. We don't have the data available there. So here if you see you have the members available. Where we can see all the applications within our AD gallery apps. Now whatever you are seeing over here, this is more from perspective of. 
a pre-built app, a kind of generic app which is there, which you can take uh, user credentials and then perform set of actions behind the scene. One more thing that you can see over here is what if I would want to create my custom application for my organization users on their day to day activities or the kind of domain that we are working with. All these things can be done by using Microsoft Graph. So Graph Explorer is just a, uh, a mechanism to see whether these things will work properly or not. It's a kind of uh, uh, what do you say a generic POC kind of thing proof of concept saying that yes, once the actual implementation is being done, we can write custom code over here to perform these actions and activities. So once it comes to your Microsoft Entra, it provides us a central identity management system where all resources are being, all identities are being stored in central place, right? In today's environment, if you look at the members over here, you have decentralized identity where we are talking about B2C, where we are talking about B2B, working with partners, working with uh, third party service providers, right? So we are entirely moving towards a decentralized kind of identity, but keeping the underlying requirement in mind, we have to make sure. We need to make sure that even with this decentralized kind of implementation, we should have our resources mapped correctly. We should have our members associated correctly. And there is a complete white paper which Microsoft has shared about decentralized identity and how we can ensure that even within this decentralized identity, we have our uh, security being insured, security and uh, at the same time, providing right access to the members is also taken care. Yeah, just because the identity is not centralized, that cannot be a uh, point saying that, no, we cannot ensure security for these team members. If you see the flow over here, so whenever there's a user request coming in, we'll have to make sure that whether that service provider, whether it is Google, whether it is uh, uh, Twitter, are those applications or all are those resources being registered with the Microsoft Azure Active Directory or Microsoft Entra ID? If they are registered, if there is a federation, right? Is there a mechanism of connecting to that identity provider using the OAuth token, right? And once we are able to connect to those resources, then we'll be able to get the final token, get the access between these users and the third party members. So if you recall, I mentioned about the authenticator app installed on my mobile phone where we have the portable credential, right? So locally on the user environment also, we have a mapping being done using OpenID Connect to make sure we have the biometrics or we have a device specific token which is being associated with the Entra ID. So if we look at the resources that we have discussed for today from perspective of identity and access management, we have discussed about association with B2B scenarios, association with users, on-premises Active Directory, on-premises applications, right? But we have not discussed about the application registration. So let me go back to my environment here. And let's go to the devices section. Oops, I'm in the wrong environment. Yeah, this is the right one. Let me go to the devices section from here. 
So you all will be able to see different set of members. So I have stale devices. Which is registered with Microsoft Intune. I have compliant and non compliant devices as well. This joining type is Microsoft Entra registration. I have a unmanaged device as well, which was my older virtual machine. Windows VM. So even before you go to. Uh, even before you go to Microsoft Intune for MDM based mapping or uh, application management, right? Enforcing some of the policies over here. We need to make sure we register these devices within the. Microsoft Entra ID. From an application point of view. There are large set of pre existing applications which are registered over here. We can also register our own applications. You'll see a lot of pre existing applications over here. If you see any new application being registered, whether you want to make it single tenant, multi tenant. And. How do you want this application to be accessed? Using a single paged application, react angular, or it could be a web based application using HTTPS. Or it would be a mobile or a desktop based application. So all these details we can mention over here. And once we are associating these members, we can specify appropriate certificates and secrets over here. So this is uh, from an application point of view. This is more like a username and password that we are using. So once it comes to your application ID, this is more like a username or the email address. Whereas certificate and secrets, this is like the Password that we are specifying for connecting to the member. Now, once this application is being connected, what all resources it can access? For that, you have to add a permission. So, if you recall, while doing it through the Graph Explorer, I can mention the permission there. But actually, behind the scene, it is using this resource. So, which member, which permissions you want that act? want to provide over here. You can enable user impersonation. We can specify delegated permissions as well. So using this application, it can connect to Azure storage and perform set of actions over here. Right, so when I say end to end solution, what I'm referring to is Association for devices, association for users, association for applications, and accessing these things using Graph API, PowerShell, using the uh, Microsoft Entra portal, right? All these aspects at one place. That's the core purpose of Microsoft Entra ID. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, there are, there are a lot of things yet to discuss, but we are uh, falling short on time. I would request you all to share your details with our team so we can connect with you all and share the next date when we'll be doing another deep dive session on entire ST300 content. From exam point of view, people who have already been through most of these members or were in process of completing their learning, there are plenty of good resources that we have on Microsoft side. You all can leverage on that. You have SC 300 exam prep videos. So similar to the one which I did right now, you all can go through a lot of other information as well. But the only challenge which I see over here in, in, in these videos is they're focusing more in terms of concepts 
rather than the hands on for it. From hands on point of view, you all would have to uh, create your own account, create your own environment, and then you can try out these features. But from a quick overview point of view, these are very good resources. You all can take a look at that. Second important resource would be your study guide. So what has been changed, what has been removed, added, right? Anything specifics from what type of questions come over here? Right, any specific details which you want to map? Say for example, configuring the company branding settings, configuring and managing custom domains. So those things, those uh, details are being mentioned over here. You all can take a look at it. Some aspect of hybrid identity I have mentioned in today's context, which is Microsoft Entra Connect. Microsoft Entra Connect is a new name. The older name is Azure AD Connect. So uh, still at number of places within your documentation, you'll see the same name, which is Azure AD Connect. So don't get confused with that. Microsoft has recently renamed Azure Active Directory to Microsoft Entra ID. So this is a good resource, guys. You all can take a look at it. From perspective of understanding. What these members are, how do they, how do we go ahead with it? Along with this, you have the exam sandbox. It does not give you the actual exam question or uh, there are there are no dumps over here. This is more in terms of understanding how the exam UI looks like. When, when there are questions being uh, mentioned, drag and drop questions or selecting right set of values from the MCQs, right? So those things we can verify from here. Right, it's more uh, better in terms of understanding especially when you're giving the exam from home, whether this JavaScript is running properly or not, there's nothing blocked over here. So all those things we can verify from this. Right, so you can take a look at the complete sandbox over here. So how the case studies are being given, what is the mechanism of marking the question for reviewing later? Right. I'm not reading the questions here. There can be. Multiple choice questions. There would be drag and drop questions over here. So if something is not working on your system. You'll know what is the problem here? What could be the issue? You can install latest browser browser versions. At times there will be a complete case study. So take time. Read the complete case study. Because the, but at times things are hidden, so we feel that only half of this is the only part of the question. Don't make that mistake. Read it. Scroll below. Check for all the values over here. OK, so if you look at the members over here. So at times the question is scattered across number of tabs. 
right? So you could, you can go to each of these sections, see what are the values or the properties being set over here. Based on that, you can answer the questions. Answer 10, unanswered 0. There is one for review. One for comment. Right, just make sure all of them have to be completed. And once we're done with this, right, so the quick understanding of what is the paper pattern, how the scores are being evaluated. Each question would have different percentage of marks here. Right? So these are set of aspects that one can verify before going to the exam. If you are going for learn on demand, there is also a sample test available within that learn on demand as well. So uh, some of you all who are doing this uh, session through us, we can provide you all the LODS resources where you all can do the practice test as well. So with this, I would want to conclude my session for today. Anyone, any questions, doubts, queries on whatever we have discussed till now? Apart from this, if you have any other questions for me, please put it in the chat window so I can take up those questions. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, thanks a lot for making for joining this session and making the session interactive. Archie, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. You can go ahead and conclude the session. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for this session. Thank you, sir, for
guys we value your feedback to continuously improve our webinar i have already shared that link please fill this feedback form For remaining, please fill this feedback form. Thank you, Mega. Thank you, Aze. Guys who are remaining, please fill that feedback form. This is very appreciated for us. Guys, also follow us on all social media platform links where you can find all upcoming events. Also, you can follow YouTube channel link where already we can upload it at a recording. Ashok, Ashwin, Debu, please fill that feedback form. I'm waiting your response. I'm waiting for your response. Ja, Sanjay, Sandeep, 